Okay, so I think just about every one of you were here last or several weeks ago when I gave this, the first part of this, this lesson. And the, the title of it is, Are You Using Your Tools, tools to Help Build God's House? And we're just going to, I'm going to do a little recap in case if you're anything like me, you may have forgotten. Um, the first tool is love. In John 3, 6, 3, in 1 John 3, 16 through 18, it says, this is how we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has this world's goods and sees a fellow believer in need but withholds compassion from him, how does God's love reside in him? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in action and in truth. God loves us with such incredible love, and he wants us to experience his incredible, life-changing love, mercy, and compassion. And he wants us to show that same love to others. Romans 12, 9 through 13 says, Love sincerely, hate evil, hold on to what is good, be devoted to each other like a loving family. Excel in showing respect for each other. Don't be lazy in showing your devotion. Use your energy to serve the Lord. Be happy in your confidence. Be patient in trouble. And pray continually. Share what you have with God's people who are in need and be hospitable. And then our next one is serve. Serve in Mark 10, 45 says, Even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to be a servant, to offer his life as a ransom for others. The Bible tells us to care for those in need and to serve our brothers and sisters in Christ. God calls us to serve others. By providing service to others, we become God's hands reaching out to them. God has a special place in his heart for the most vulnerable members of society, and he has called us, his followers, to provide this service to them. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Just as each one of you has received a special gift, a spiritual talent, an ability graciously given by God, employ it in serving one another as is appropriate for good stewards of God's multifaceted grace, faithfully using the diverse, varied gifts and abilities granted to Christians by God's unmerited favor. And our next one is pray. Oops. In Ephesians, well, praying is praying for others is a vital part of the Christian life. And Ephesians 6.18 says, With all prayer and petition, pray with specific requests at all times, on every occasion, and in every season, in the Spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. Now, Jesus often prayed with and for his disciples. He even taught them to pray as a family. And when he left them to go to the Father, oh, I'm not supposed to be reading this, but anyway, they found strength in praying together. Remember, we are in a spiritual battle, and prayer is our spiritual weapon in this struggle. We must pray for the spiritual lives of each other. And as we pray for one another, we are to give thanks to our Father who has placed those people in our lives and remember that each of them represents a member of the family of God. 
We are a family in the Lord, and he has given us this incredible privilege. We are commanded to carry one another's burdens, and praying is one of the ways that we can do this. Praying for others strengthens our bond with each other, and it also strengthens our relationship with God. Okay, one more. Worship and gather. Okay, worshiping together in Matthew eighteen twenty. The verse says, where two or three are gathered in my name, meeting together as my followers, I am there among them. Corporate worship is where we, is where we gather together in one place to pray, sing, learn, and worship together. There is something we get with worshiping and gathering together that we just don't get when we're apart. So why do we gather together? We gather together because we are commanded to, as it states in Hebrews 10.25. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. And we gather together because this is when and where the Holy Spirit shows up to teach and inspire us. It's the Holy Spirit that draws out the truth from the sermons and the lessons and applies it to our hearts. Okay, and now that's just a recap. And now we're going to finish part two. Okay, so continuing, continuing on, protect the unity. In John seventeen twenty one, Jesus said, I pray that all of these people continue to have unity in the way that you, Father, are in me and I am in you. I pray that they may be united with us so that the world will believe that you have sent me. So what is the biblical meaning of unity? Well, some of the definitions for unity in the Merriam-Webster dictionary include the quality or state of being made one, unification, a condition of harmony, and a combination, of, a combination or ordering of parts that constitutes a whole. Meanwhile, spiritual is defined as of, relating to, consisting of, or affecting the spirit and related or joined together in spirit. And this is a commentary from Spiritual Unity from uh, Street Sense Media. Oh, I forgot to put the... There. Okay, <laughs> so... The spiritual unity... Oh, this spiritual unity isn't just a simple camaraderie achieved through human strength. We are to be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. From a human perspective, it is impossible to act in this way because sin will always bring trouble, selfish desires, and conflicts in relationships. But those who are made alive in Christ are called to live out their new identity in practical ways. They are to make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. We can't reach spiritual unity through our own power but through God's perfect power that is at work within us. And our last, no, our next tool is give. In 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8, it says, Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, 
and whoever sows generous, generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. God wants us to give because it is a reminder of the blessings that he gives to us through Jesus Christ. He blesses us with all that we need, and whoever shares those blessings will be enriched, and the one who waters will himself be watered. And I have another commentary, and then when I went back to find out who did it, I couldn't find it, but I would just want you to know it's commentary and it's not mine. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyone can give. So long as whatever is given, whether it be a service or a material gift, makes a positive impact and difference in the life of the recipient, then it qualifies to be a charitable gift. But it must be given unconditionally without any expectation of a reciprocal action from the receiver. And our last tool is reach out. And this is just a reminder from the video. There are three reasons the church exists. And they are, one, to love God. Two, to love each other. And three, to reach out to our world. Galatians 6, 9 through 10 says, Let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap if we do not give in. So then, while we as individual believers have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, not only being helpful but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well-being and especially be a blessing to those of the household of faith, born-again believers. And this commentary is, from, is by New Spring Church, and it is about reaching out to others. So why do you turn, who do you turn to for help? When you're struggling, you don't have to answer right now. <laughs> okay. At the most difficult time of Jesus' life, he took his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane and asked them to watch and pray. If the Son of God needed others' support, well, then how much more must we? We can take Jesus' example as permission to reach out and ask for help. And moreover, as the church, we can proactively reach out to those that God has placed in our lives by offering our support. In Colossians 2.2, Paul encourages the church to be knit together by strong ties of love. The church was designed to care for one another and to contend for one another. To contend for someone simply is to fight for them, to grapple with what holds them back, to face their struggle, and take it on as our own. That's what Paul did for the churches that he started, and it's what we're called to do for each other. We don't have to wait for the pastor to call or for someone to send out a meal train. We contend for one another when we pray, when we see a need and meet it, and when we let someone know that they are not alone. Whether it's a phone call, a note, or an invitation to coffee, expressing care and concern goes a lot farther than we realize. In Galatians 6.2, Paul tells the church, 
carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. So think about this. What is one practical way that you can show Jesus' love to someone? And who needs your prayers? Take a few minutes and write down the names and the needs of those closest to you. And take those needs to God and ask him to show up for your family and friends. So, I'm asking you, all of you, to make a commitment. Better yet, a covenant through prayer to God that you will help build his house by implementing these tools. Love, serve, pray, Worship and gather together. Protect the unity. Give and reach out to our world. Thank you. We'll close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can all be together. Thank you for this lesson. I... I just pray, Father God, that you will help each and every one of us to remember what these tools are, why we have been called by you, and help us to remember to share the gifts that you have given us with our hearts to others and be there for others and to to practice these tools in every facet of our life, wherever we go and wherever we are. I just pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.